Lord will do one thing, but I'm going to go ahead and pick up from this morning. Living for Him. And so we're going to, um, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 5, uh, again. And I, brother, when I came to you, came not with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except to be saved or except to be the Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching was not the enticing words of man's wisdom, but a demonstration of the Spirit and the power. That, or so that, you can do that really so that, so that, but for this reason, that, that, that means, that, that particular word there, that means, for this reason, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. We're talking about living for Christ, living for Jesus, and then living for Him. And our, and our purpose in life being that of surrender and sacrifice to Him and His will. Amen. Now, you know, one of the, uh, regretfully, one of the uh, uh, side effects of the, the charismatic word of faith teaching revival was we spent so much time teaching about who we are in Christ, and the righteousness of God in Christ, what we have in Christ, what belongs to us in Christ. A lot of people forgot that we're supposed to live for Christ. Hello. We got so busy trying to figure out what I could get. I mean, you know, I mean, my name is Jimmy, and I take all you give me. You know, me, my, you know, uh, if here's me, my wife, I could get dressed for no more. Amen. It's all about what was in for me, and we lost focus. Yeah, we needed to know who we are in Christ. We still need to know that. You need to know what you have in Christ. And you need to know what belongs to you in Christ. Amen. I believe that every, every bit of that. We still teach it. But with all that knowledge, you shouldn't stop living for Christ. Selling out to the Lord. Now, this is a bobblehead thing. You can shake your head yet, whether you like it or not. All right? So we're just going to get a Jerry bobblehead. Amen. We'll sell them in the bookstore next week. Jeremy, they just take me to the all the time. All right. Amen. So we talked about this morning, and I know we digressed a little bit to get to different areas, but um, <clears throat> Paul was talking about, and he didn't want to say, you know, anything among us that Jesus Christ is in the Our lives should be a reflection of Jesus. Amen. Our lives should be a complete reflection of Him. We should be sold out to Him. We should be living for Him, His will, and His good pleasure, and His purpose. Yeah. We said this morning, <clears throat> you can have a um, you can have a prosperity seminar and you'll fill the building up. You can have a supernatural death transformation seminar and you'll fill the building up. Have a come sacrifice your life to the Lord seminar for your action. Hello. It's the truth. You know, we've got to get beyond what's in it for me. When we understand the fundamental truth of who we are, what we have, what belongs to us in Christ. That should be a foundation which we use to live our life for Him. And as a matter of fact, we see Paul who doesn't want to live for Him more. Not, how can I get away with more? Hello. There's some people who think that, you know, certain aspects of the Bible are designed so they can just do whatever they want to and get with no consequences. Uh, I got news for you. God said, uh, Paul wrote to the church of Corinth and said, Look, well, man, show us that because the Lord's pretty weak. We'll be so good. And we're just talking about uh, that's just talking about nothing, really. He said, for these souls to the flesh, souls to the flesh, through corruption. And these souls to the life of spirit, so a lot of the spiritual life to receive life everlasting. So we should be living for Him. Amen. I mean, the pursuit of the heart. You know, so can we go back to the old covenant? We're not under the old covenant. Yeah, but there's some good stuff there. If you don't think so, just tear that part out of your Bible and don't read it anymore. Did you know the book of Hebrews said that the things that happened to Israel were written as the, the King James uses the word incense. It just means example to us. They're an example for us. So therefore, what was written is important. Everybody say, Amen, or Bob will take for me. All right, there it is. Amen. So glory to God. We're going to live for Him. Our life is to be for Him. Paul calls himself the bond servant of the Lord. Three, yes, but see, he made himself bound to the Lord to carry out the Lord's will, no matter what. 
there's, 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 there's certain things you need to understand as a believer. When we're teaching certain things in church, sometimes we've got to teach stuff to get people out of the ditch of condemnation and bondage of, of self evasion and not how they're just so sorry and no good. But we don't need to go on in the other ditch on the other side of the road and we don't know how to God can bless me no matter what I do. I'm just, I'm the most wonderful thing to see in this life here and the gospel's all about me. The gospel's about restoring this time to the original state to carry out the plan of God. If you don't give me one good guess, I'm going to start over. Hallelujah. And then we got this one talking about when you first got born again, did you ever think about what was in it for you? I knew people went to church. Why didn't you go to church when you first got saved to find out what that good, what, what, what you know, uh, goody God had for you? They didn't want to learn more about that. They were just so in love with God. All they cared about was getting to know Him better. To find out how they could serve Him better. And do more for the kingdom. Now, listen, you can go to all you can go all the on that. But we want to do this have that same zeal and love and desire for God with the knowledge of all the things He's done for us without that coming and giving us the complacency of what's in it for me. Amen. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead and go to this point. We, we stopped this morning in Colossians 3, which we'll just pick up there again. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things that are above. This is not a suggestion by Paul. Some people think the Bible is full of suggestions. Hello? And escape clauses. You know what I mean by escape clauses? You know, like one week up went to a pastor friend of mine one day and they're in his office counseling. They said, we need counseling that couple of things. We need to see Our relationship with the Lord. They're living together. And they're married. Yeah. He said, I think I know what you're talking about. He said, oh, you know, side thing. He's got the to link to our relationship problem. You should be fornicating. You're living together. You're cohabitating. And, 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 and you're not married. They said, oh, I'm not a pastor. I have no idea what he's doing. No, it's not selling out. That's looking for escape clauses and some kind of teaching that's going to allow you to do what you want to do. Hello. Now, I don't know if it's a knowledge of the people like him. He, he, he keeps true to the word of God constantly. It doesn't get like people are like this to see. Now, when you teach things out of balance, you can do that. When you teach them erroneously, you don't teach them in the, the full counsel of the word of God, you can do that. There's some things we hear with faith teaching back in the 70s and 80s that we call out of balance. I know I don't. I've done it. 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 You don't need your neighbor's wife or his car. Student walked up to Brother Hayden one day uh, after the green class said, uh, he's getting out of the Ford Bronco. They were bored to buy him a Ford Bronco. And uh, he said, You take care of my, my Bronco. Bronco there gets to know. And he said, What? He said, You take care of my Bronco. The Bible says you can have what you say. And I claim it's your Ford Bronco. Now, just think about it. I can, I can, I can imagine an unlearned man student going up to another lamb. I mean, you know, this doesn't speak much better. He did, he, he thought he had it. You can have what you say. No, 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 no. Check, check. He said, well, I'll tell you what. I've got something to do with it. And the Lord's already given me a word. He said, yeah, what is it? He told me, he said, keep it. <laughs> yeah, keep it. Now, you go back to Mark 1, 22, 23, 24. He said, what sort of thing do you say? You know, he says the faith of this mountain. Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. And shall not, uh, you shall not talk, you shall believe the things you say that come to pass. He'll have whatsoever faith. I like that verse 22. Have faith in God and have faith in God. 
Go to Romans 10, 17. For the faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The things you say have to come out of the Bible, or it's not faith. Amen. Say amen or all me, or so anyhow. He said, you know, Jesus said that have faith in God. Then he said, what things shall we do to God? Pray to Jesus, you don't even have that. What's it based on? It's based on what the, what the, what the Bible says. If it's not coming out of the Word of God, in other words, God doesn't promise you that everything is like that. And it definitely don't promise you somebody else's life. Hello? Are you here? Now, so we covet the neighbor's stuff. Including his wife. Hello? A covetous thing. A teaser. If you get crazy and get carried down to you, woo! I have what I say. Only if it lines up with the Bible. Alright, now. If you be risen for I speak those things which are above. Again, this is not a suggestion. This is a command. Let us really speak the things of heaven, where God, where Christ is on the right hand of God, set the affection on things above and not on things of the earth. Now, uh, back in about 2000, 99, 2000, uh, Brother Hayden had a meeting in Tulsa right before Christmas, about a month before Christmas. Following year, but I can tell you how to find out what year it was. Go get the book of Mike, take a look at the TV screen. It was the year before that. Okay? And it's called All the Cross Church Sisters. Sat them all down. So that you guys get my back. He said, You're not teaching anything new. He said, All this back in the late 50s. He had a notebook for those tags. He said, I got all the notes from the end. You're not teaching anything new. He said, And what they taught got out of that and killed the vision of God. He said, I'm determined not that to happen again. Now, he didn't go to some of those guys and all of their books down about charity and how God was going to do all this kind of stuff. And somebody got mad at him. And I, I can amaze you from you now. That's my spiritual father. My dad saw you from me and he didn't have that. Listen to the talk about Oh, man, he's a father of this world. Amen. Now, what do you mean it, it, it killed the vision of God? See, when people shift, when people are Selling out for God, and all they're looking for is how can I get by? That God wants to bless you financially. God wants to bring you out of debt. He has a plan for that, a biblical plan. Give in and so to give. Bring the tithe and offering into the storehouse. God wants to bless you. God wants to bring you know God wants to bring blessings into your life. The return that brings you out of debt. Now you can't be believing God to get out of debt on one hand and debting it up on the other hand. And then going to church and going to give to the special speaker and going to have supernatural debt cancellation next week. And some like some folks running up their debts and waiting for the rapture. If the rapture comes, I won't have to pay it back. And the Lord gives us his help. That means God can cancel your debt supernaturally. But you know what? I have found that in most cases, the Lord says you gave in the offering of that thing. I think that's that. If you study the people who come to church and tell you that you know, God wiped out their debt, they've been giving for years, they've been sowing for years, they've been faithful to give, they've been faithful to tithe, they've been faithful to do what God said to do with the finances, and then the blessing of Jesus is the heart. And that faith comes out. Don't just think, well, I'm going to give this one thing, and next week I'm going to have enough to make it up. I'm going to ask someone else. Financial study. You know the book of Acts. Now that's where Pastor got that term from. In Acts chapter two, studying the things down to heaven is a mighty work for man. Now think about it. See, the God times is different. They were prophesied that seventy to fifteen hundred plus years. So in one sense, he was in studying for fifteen hundred years, and then suddenly came. But it wasn't. They started praying in the morning and suddenly it came that afternoon and they'd never been heard of before. There'd been 1,500 years of a word spoken by God that in the last days I'll pour out my spirit. Hello? The promise to Abraham was 25 years old when I was still up. Hello? That's why 
about it is a flat ground called the Grand Hotel Abraham. It took us 24 years to figure out how it was going to be. We said it was going to be with the NFL and not anybody else, not with the steward in town, not with the, the bond service, not with Abraham. We're going to do it with Sarah. And we're here. This time next year. So it's, it took 24 years to get to the place that God say this time next year. You know, I'm just doing so much with whatever drugs they are. You know, they spend about half of what you tell them what they have to do. By the time they get done, who wants to run to the doctor and get that medicine? You know, cause of death, cause of blindness, cause of this, cause of that. And you're going, I mean, they're going, you might be a candidate for whatever, whatever. Now, some people have been known to die. Some people have been known to have blood clots. Some people have been known to have hernia. Some people have been known to have this, this, that, this, boom, boom, boom. You think of mine. God, do I want? And then they get done and say, so check with your doctor. Don't need to. Got my answer during the commercial. Woo! One of the side effects. So one of the side effects of the internet side of balance effect, especially among the prosperity, was that people began, you, you started out saying that I'm the Lord, and that's covenant with you, and I'm going to not I'm the Lord, but you have called me to get well, but I'm going to establish my covenant in the earth. And let me tell you something. What we did with that. He said, well, there's double meaning there. One is, we're going to preach the gospel of The second meaning is, God wants to establish his covenant of captivity. Here's the problem. Everybody jumped on the second one and forgot about the first one. Not everybody, but the majority of people. They began to talk about how they were going to have houses and boats and land. I mean, they started in, you know, having images. They were putting pictures of yachts on the refrigerator. As they had said, the majority weren't putting Pictures of crusades in Africa on their refrigerator. Because they were believing the money for it. Okay. See, what happened was we preached a minute message to an immature church, and they did exactly what the immature people did. They looked for what was in it for them. And nobody came back that they had prophecy to put the book of Micah said. So I bring correction to that to say, hey, that's really it's not about me. I have a sick home. Before we tell it was the network, six of the network, they got millions of dollars. And I think some guy told them Angel was paying like a $27 million loan for the post for the program to run around and give it to the NFL television station and have a nice place to stay in Australia. Now, what now, brother Summer? Sitting, we were sitting in heaven one night. It wasn't an NFL, but we were, we were, we were in our home church in Greenville. We were sitting at dinner with the pastor there. He said, Lord, I can see him with it. And he said he was getting ready to preach it. That would make a difference about something in life. And I said, Oh, that's the first thing I did. He said, I'm getting ready to go to Springfield. He was hot. You know why he was hot? They had $167 million in commissions of funds sitting there. And he's thinking, What are they doing sitting in that money? We can be reaching the lights. We could be good. He was hot, brother. And he said, we could have been able to go to and let him know we saw it. And we'll nobody able to stop him. He's like a bull in a china shop. Hello? I mean, he's a spiritual sophomore. I mean, he didn't, he didn't bounce up. He couldn't pull up the park place and pull out of it. He went off of it. He had a garage on the one end and a garage on the other end of the garage. But he didn't bounce up for anything. Yeah, $167 million of commissions of just sitting there. I don't know why I'm sitting there not being used to use the law. How do I get it? I said, <coughs> let's uh, I think I'm trying to learn to set gross business double financing. Now I'm three days in this day. But there's one statement he made that's always kind of stuck with me. That, 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 that has application to it. Fine. Your maximum moderate lifestyle. You stay there. And then use the excess to love the Lord. How, how many fresh feet do you need? Honestly. Now, um, uh, a few years ago, Alan, one of the best, uh, 
when you just look at the passage, you can see the of the Bible, home, home, to the church, 12,000 people out there in the world. He went quiet. He got lost in the church. We're walking off of the church. He's still he's winding it up. But just like, you know, panels in the church, as you walk in the house, light lights up before you go off behind you. I mean, they have, you know, this is a kind of controlled environment. Media room that sit had all the DVD players and the VHS players and just it fed the whole house. Speakers that fed the whole house. And it's a couple with no kids. I mean, they got, you know, they got a walkway, catwalk from the house to the boat. There's a room in the garage and there's a pool table. The stuff is all the time with stuff. Let me ask you the Christian. Now, this is that house for several million dollars. What point do you say as a believer? I've had enough hundreds of these creations of the gospel. And you say that if you're living for him, he'll answer that question for you. If you're living for you, you'll still struggle with that answer. If you don't set your affections on things above, you won't get the answer. Because enough will never be enough. Whatever it is in the natural, you'll never have enough. You'll get this new car. You'll drive it a year. And they'll come out with a newer, latest, greatest, coolest model. And guess what you want? You want a newer, greatest, greatest. Why? Because the flesh can never be satisfied. Think of why we have pornographic addiction, alcoholic addiction. Drug addiction. Why? Because you cannot satisfy the flesh. The, the, I mean, I'm still talking about living for him. Don't think I'm still talking about him. I'm not saying setting your affections on things above. The 70s free love movement. Oh, we put, put Puritan, Victorian, you know, restrictions on love and sex that are so outdated. Led to the perversion and the promotion of lesbianism, homosexuality, and pedophilia. It's coming mainstream in society. Why? Because it started out by breaking the very commandments. Do you know why Satan wants to destroy your marriage? Because God had a plan to put him out of church. The first institution of God. Was a man to lead his father and mother in freedom to his wife. Satan's out to destroy the very first institution. Why? Because he'll undermine the foundation, foundation of the church. Thank you. Well, we're two women. We got two kids. What thing? No, you're not. We're two men. We got two boys. What thing? No, you're not. I don't care what you call it. I'm your family. Oh, you're just being there, man. Don't be a biblical. Satan's trying to destroy that. Why? Let me think. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make that thing happen. <coughs> because Satan began in the. Um, the I knew it was even before that, but you know, y'all can ask the slave this part of that. You know, back in the 60s. Man, you know, man, you know, the first cover girl. Or whatever. Opened a whole new world. And he started back. He started back. The foundation of family, of fidelity, of commitment from one to another. Hello? Today, Christian marriages end in divorce at the same rate that secular marriages end in divorce. It used to be that way. When I was younger, when I first came to the Lord, it wasn't so. And, and that's, and that's uh, <laughs> 33, 34 years that I came to know the Lord, that, that percentage has been coming in. Part of a sex, what they call the sexual revolution. It wasn't a sexual revolution. It was a sexual destruction. But the flesh can never be satisfied. And so sex outside of marriage and multiple partners never satisfies. So you've got to go to another level or a different way to find some type of satisfaction. Perversion in the Hello? And 
going to go down. Let me tell you something. In 30 years, if we don't change something in this country, they're going to be having people marching and worshiping for their right to cut a period. And you're going to have people saying that they're saying that homestead guidelines. Well, they've got a right to have it. They have less food. I mean, who are we? <laughs> to say, you know, so listen, the door is open. Sexual orientation. We're limiting it now to homosexuality, lesbianism, homosexuality, uh, cross dressing, transgender. That's what opened it up to say, so we're going to say the same thing. We're going to do studies to find out they're born that way, and it's normal for them. Why? Because you can't satisfy the flesh. The flesh cannot, that's why you have to offer your body a living sacrifice, because you can't satisfy it. Somebody starts looking at pornography, it's never enough to say. To see this, they got to see more. It's got to become more graphic. It's got to become more intense. And it's driven. And the more they go, the more they're driven. And they can never get satisfied. <coughs> Hello? Y'all hear? Alcohol. Y'all, you, you ever look at, you know, you ever before you got saved? I'm trying to protect you. Before you got saved, you drink, you know this. When you start drinking, you can't handle nothing. I mean, you can get near beer and get drunk on beer. But then you got to drink, then you start to get where you got to drink, you know, uh, 3.2 to 6.4 or whatever. You got to start going to hard liquor. I mean, it's a really hard place to get to know them. But the mad dog 2020, you know, this is wild out of gold. <coughs> What's that? Keep drunk. The only reason people drink that is to get drunk. It is not for the pleasure of drinking. It's drunk. So what happens? When you start out, the flesh, but then it wants more. And then it wants more. Out of drugs. Which people start smoking, start smoking pot. They just legalized pot in Colorado and in Washington. You watch the, you watch the other drugs go up. The heroin and the cocaine and all the other things start going up in usage because they've legalized that. Even though the high percent of smoking that, they really want that drug. Why? Because the pleasure can be satisfied with drinking wine. Having a joint, having a person inside, growing my own little plant, whatever you want me. Why? Because the flesh can't be satisfied. Paul said, I, you know, he said that he had to offer his life a living sacrifice. Are you here? Amen? He said, I buffet my body, I keep it under. I keep it under. You have to keep your body under. Now, when we cater to the flesh under the guise of a Christian message, we stop living for him and we live for us. We don't have to live how many people hate this world. If there's a party there, there's a life, if there, there, there's, a, there's a thing in your life that has you live sacrificially. When you say no to your flesh and yes to God, God loves me and God will never do anything else that will cause me pain. Really? Is that right? I'm not talking about sitting in the TV, sitting in a car wreck. But if you don't like being told no, you don't get that from God. We mean, He can tell you no, you can't sin. And He'll take from you when you do. I don't believe that. I don't know. The Bible says it's not, that those that God does not take them are back to That's the Bible, not me. I'm not trusting that. It's really not just what we need to talk about what we need to be a father of. He said, if you need the Lord, take you. Don't you know? He tells you you can't do it just like you want to do it. Paul wrote and said, set you. He said, don't tell us to die and get married. Don't tell us to die. All this to say, your flesh, that's a desire. Your flesh wants to dictate to you what you do and don't do. But you're going to live for him. You gotta set your affections above your flesh. And let me tell you, your flesh will want to collect and say, I'm gonna back out and partake from it. That same desire that people have to misappropriate the prosperity message about being all about them is simply their fleshly lack of ability to find satisfaction. Not all, but some preachers use that to advantage to milk the congregation. Not at all. 
figures like that to hear my Lord. You can do it to a church. They use that. Oh, did you hear the whistle? You know? It's a thousand fold annoying to us. You think it's not a biblical description of whistle? It's just a thousand fold annoying. You know, you know, you know, well, but the only thing you know that you can put the same thing close to the same thing like that is some of them, some 30, some 50, some even 100 fold. No thousand fold. Such a good man. He's here tonight. He's going to have supernatural experiences in this world. And I'm telling you, I got news for you. You better watch it. And if you grow up and stuff it in people's pockets because everybody else sees it, you're going to get a lot of anger. Money out of people and walked out of churches with it. Hello, put the money in the room, put the money in the room. Go on, look at it, make the money. That's what they were doing. They were doing that. And what happened when they the work was supposed to be done for God wasn't done because the money was there. If you know the Bible teaching, you know what we're talking about here. It's teaching out there. Now, I mean, it's not as pleasant now, but it's still going to be. In order to get blessed, you've got to give up. And the Bible doesn't say that. It says, bring time and offering into the storehouse. Jesus said, give it. He didn't say anything about you have to give up. That's a man made doctrine. There's no, listen, I know some good ministers have said it. And I, 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 I appreciate them for a lot of things they've done, but that's a blaming statement. You don't give up to get. You give to your church. You give also. He that lives to the poor gives to the Lord. I will pay, says the Lord. And if the Lord tells you to give to somebody, give to them. But don't fall into the trap of believing if I give up, I'm going to get blessed. Because you've got everybody, everybody running around trying to find out how they're going to get in the trap. I'll tell you what, when you give it, you leave your family to the Lord, you are giving up because you give it to the Lord. Don't let some man milk you out of money by saying, I got the higher anointing. You've got to give to me. A lot of churches aren't doing what they say to do. They keep everybody sending their money out to somebody to give up. Don't be too enthusiastic. Now let's get back to your philosophy. Say that again. I'm not rambling. I know where I know where I'm going. All right. So set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth, for you're dead, <laughs> and your life is hidden in Christ. Wow. What's that mean? If you're dead. That means the dictates and desires of your personal wants become totally subservient to what God has and what God wants and what God desires. Amen? Set your affections on the things above. Get put them on Jesus. Have your heart on the Lord. Have your heart on serving God. Have your heart on reaching the lost. Have your heart on helping helping the church get the job done and, and supporting missionaries and, 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 and preaching the gospel around the world. I, you know, like, like me, I have a calling to go do things over overseas. Well, it takes money to do that. Not the issue. Not trying to just run around. Ooh, I'm going to succeed. <clears throat> I mean, I've seen some cool stuff overseas. And I'm saying about every time I every time I let it go, I come home and say, I'm glad we got to America. Thank God for America. I remember when I went to Thailand, the first thing they got me off the airplane was, don't say anything bad about the king. I said, why they still there? Because it was a deity. You can't preach about it. You can't say anything negative about it, they'll kill you. Okay. You preach about Jesus? He's the king of the king. <laughs> I don't know. Glory to God. Y'all hear me going home. Yeah. Thank God for America. Amen. It's raining here, isn't it? All right, let me, let me get here. Go to 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. And then we'll skip out of chapter 7, verse 22 and 23. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? If you have God, you are not your own. 
for you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. Chapter 7, verse 1 But he that calls you is the Lord, being a servant, uh, being a servant is the Lord's free man. Likewise, also he that is called being free, Christ's servant. You are bought with a price. Be not ye the servant of men. Now, let me say this to you. Don't be a servant of men, don't be a servant of yourself. And I'll tell you what, I want to do this at the church, church. And they've got a lot of time and all, and they've got, you know, a, a super cafe, cool things that get. I'm going to church that. Why? They believe that they believe that you believe. No, they got to treat them. You pay them for the flesh. And you're teaching your kids to pay them for the flesh. It's okay to have it. We want to do more cool stuff. That's why our youth is so cool. But don't make a decision based on whether you or don't. Don't teach your kids that it's about the flesh and not about God. I can't take you to that church. I'm glad. They take you to your hands with the devil. I can't take you to that church. I know you're going to take me one time because I go to one of the more bitter youth groups and then went to a church that didn't, that didn't even believe anything we believe except getting saved. And they did it every week. Amen. Every week they had an all star game. Everybody got saved again. So they had to empty into that young man with the, the, the verse 27 year old boss that you were empty into. That's not going to come to me. You're going to have to do that. You put that on the church. What do you think? You just go to the, we don't believe in nothing church. Paul is about her flesh and her fleshly desires. And then you expect her to live out of her spirit. It don't work that way. He said it doesn't work that way. You're bought with a price. You submit yourself to the will of God. Amen? You make your decisions based on what the Lord said, not on what's convenient to you or what you appease your flesh. Let me tell you something. If you know better, it's really tough. When you know what to do right and do it or not, you don't have to Amen. See, I love the teaching on who we are in Christ. I teach it. I love the apology of Jesus. I love the, the, the blood stain. I love that God wants to see that. It's fine. Man, you can, you can tell a Bible study and be fine and not be too crazy about it. I have fine with that. You can be off the deep end there. You don't have to run around saying, I have what I say, so I can tell the church it's not mine. You don't have to go around saying, I'm under grace, and then you can do it many times when you want to do it, because you're going to grace anyway. I know mean, one lady told me, I, I saw a blog. <clears throat> I, was on, I was on a blog, and she was on it, and she was saying, God, I'm so glad I'm under grace. I don't have to do it. I don't have to tie it. I don't have to go to church. I don't have to do this. She just went down the list of everything that the Bible tells you to do. She said she didn't have to do it. She just under grace. And it didn't matter. And now I talked to her a few minutes. I said, well, you know, um, I went on and on about, you know, what you're supposed to do and how the Bible says this and the Bible says that. And, and I, you know, she said, well, you got to sit like that. I mean, even the guards, they were told to keep them in. You can't have any commands. There's no God. You, you can't be told to do anything. Who says that? Or it's, it's law. Bible says, you know, not, not to, you know, to, to save your fornication. That's not under grace. We're saying, you dress it up, it's a commandment. Well, that's law. No, it's not law. The Bible tells you not to. New Testament. So I said, well, you know, even Adam and Eve were told in the Garden of Eden not to take, not to eat the fruit of the tree of life good and evil. You know, this person said, you know, you've got to take some crazy things. They didn't have the Holy Spirit in them like we did. God took dirt, made it, and the Bible says He took us, He breathed into the breath of life. The word breathe in Hebrew is the same word for, for spirit. He took part of His spirit and put it in that body. And they didn't have the Holy Ghost in their mind either. Hello? They were so full of the Spirit of God, Moses was just a glimmer of what they looked like. When he came out of the mountain, they had to put a veil over his face because the glory shone so bright. Just as he was in the presence of God, his face began to radiate with the glory. They had a covenant. 
And the reason they didn't know they were naked is because the glory was coming out of them so strong you couldn't see them out. The men they committed high treason, they were born again from life and the death. The light went out, but because the spirit of the DD, the spirit of darkness, and they knew they were naked. They didn't have the Holy Ghost in them. I have to say that. You can't argue with people. I'm serious, you can't argue with people. When people make up their mind to be an extra, people, church, listen to me in a minute. Stop looking for ways to make sure everything is right in the world. And set your affection on things that are right. You've been bought with a price. Jesus shed his blood, poured out his very life spirit to redeem you from destruction and to bring you into the kingdom of God, glory to God. He did not pour that out so you can go out and figure out how to keep living in sin and get away with it. He did it so you can be reconciled to God and carry out His intent for your life. He didn't lift his hand. You can have a desire to live for God like nothing else. Your desire, I'm going to tell you something. Jesus said this one day, and I know it's going to apply to both of us, but I I shouldn't have asked this. He was sitting in the way, sitting in the side of the way to get food. And a woman showed up, and he began to talk to her. You know the woman who had a silent husband? And then they talked during the conversation, and finally he says, Don't call your husband. She said, Sir, I have no husband. He said, I was well said. God has had five husbands, and God, you're shacking up here right now. He's your husband. And he said, King James said, You're a flower. And the one that I'll pass now has got five husbands. Thank you. Shacking up, you fornicate. Hello? He's had five. And now you're shacking up. She went off, come here, man, and told me all that I ever did. Now, she, she's having a change in her life. The disciples show up, they come back, and, hey, Jesus, we got, we got Taco Bell, we got Cookout, we got, I mean, we got Wendy's. I mean, we even went by Wendy's and things, and, you know, uh, East Coast got some wings and things or whatever. Hallelujah. We got to go and got a two liter of hope, glory to the world. Hallelujah. And he said, I had a meeting in that area. Now, they're so bone here they go. And then he goes on to say, this. And I need you to go through the same. The satisfaction of life. Your satisfaction will achieve when you come to understand that it can be. It's to do the will of Him that He sent you. Amen. And so you see that. God doesn't get here like Carl and Eric. God doesn't get here like Pastor Mike. But when all you're doing is pursuing the world and its good, you're not following the word that says set your affection on things above. Can't hold that up. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't. I will. We'll get more like the back end of this place. Let it be. Let it stay right in the hand. And so we say, Amen. 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 Let's come from Christian church. Amen. That's all. Amen. Have the light. We don't want to be that way, do we? We want to be steady. We want to be consistent. We want to be about the Lord's work. Jesus is 12 years old. How many of you know how much about my father's business? He came to look at the men who lost three days. They came out of the diamond temple. And he planted you this earth and said, How much do you know how much about my father's business? Amen. Glory to God. So we're going to live for the Lord, aren't we? We're going to live on the same. Listen, what's that mean? We've got to build the church. We've got to do what God wants us to do. Take a sacrifice. It doesn't take a lot of 